part 13 of polytechnic lecturer previous year question discussion video we are going to see some more questions in this video you'll be seeing questions on board so let us see the first question okay the question is material which can be strongly magnetized are known as dash materials okay so there are various type of magnetic materials based on their magnetization or the uh, magnetizing power okay so the question here is material which can be strongly magnetized are called dash materials a paramagnetic b diamagnetic c ferromagnetic d pure magnet okay so we'll see about all the terms or all the options here the correct answer for the question is ferromagnetic that is a material which can be strongly magnetized is called ferromagnetic okay ferromagnetic materials can be strongly magnetized okay now what is the first option that is paramagnetic paramagnetic is a form of magnetization where some ma some materials are weakly attracted by an external applied magnetic field that means they can be only weakly magnetized okay so the magnetic force of attraction or experienced by those materials will be weak only okay so that type of material are called paramagnetic material paramagnetic means they can be only weakly attracted okay next second option is diamagnetic right diamagnetic means this diamagnetic materials are actually repelled by the magnetic field okay so they are not attracted they are actually repelled repelled by the magnetic field such type of materials are called diamagnetic materials so these are the three important classifications of materials ferromagnetic paramagnetic and diamagnetic so the question is actually asking regarding strongly magnetizable or strongly magnetized materials they are the first one which is ferromagnetic so the correct answer is option c then option d is actually uh, just pure magnet it doesn't have any property just talking about a pure magnetic material okay so the correct answer for the first question is option c ferromagnetic okay next question second question is semiconductor in its pure form is referred to as dash very simple question a intrinsic semiconductor b extrinsic c crystal semiconductor d doped semiconductor correct answer is in a pure form that is in the extremely pure form semiconductor is called extrinsic okay so a semiconductor sorry not extrinsic it is intrinsic in the pure form semiconductor is called intrinsic and if you perform some doping to this intrinsic semiconductor they will be converted as extrinsic okay or it can be called as doped semiconductor okay so intrinsic plus doping is called extrinsic semiconductor or it called it is called as doped semiconductor okay so here it is asking regarding the pure form it is called intrinsic which is option a okay next question that is the third question third question is the potential difference across a pn junction is referred to as dash a potential difference b barrier potential c reverse potential d pn potential correct answer is it is barrier potential only they are asking the term referred to the the potential difference it is called barrier potential or it is sometimes also called built in potential these terms are used okay barrier potential or built in potential correct answer is option b okay next question so even though we are actually knowing the concepts a lot of people are actually having uh, doubts or confusion regarding the terms or the namings so you should be having a thorough idea about what is the exact name given to the these voltages and everything okay otherwise you will uh, fail to score in this type of questions because we know the concept we we know that there is some potential difference across a pn junction 
but we don't know what is exact name means you cannot score okay so you should be knowing the exact naming and all so moving on to the fourth question what value of voltage is obtained directly from the wave from uh from sorry waveform shown uh, on a cro when connected across the secondary of a transformer i'll read the question once again okay what value of voltage is obtained directly from the waveform shown on cro when connected across the secondary of a transformer that is when there is a transformer there is a primary winding and then there is a secondary winding right so when we are connecting a cro probe across the secondary and when we are going to uh, see this output on a cro and the value of voltage we are we are going to take directly from the waveform which is shown on the cro what is that voltage called okay so when we connect a cro here we will get a voltage right or we will get a waveform and if you measure the value of this waveform what is the measured voltage value called that is a question okay so options are a peak value b rms value c peak to peak value d average value so here we are not performing any operations or anything we are just measuring the value from the secondary of the transformer so it is called peak to peak voltage okay the peak to peak voltage will be actually obtaining on the cro so the correct answer is option c okay the voltage we will be measuring is called peak to peak voltage okay next question fifth question fifth question is the main component used in ripple filter circuit is dash a capacitor b resistor d diode sorry c diode d transformer so here we are talking about a ripple filter so whenever we are talking about filters most commonly we are using capacitors okay capacitors are used as a very good uh, filtering component okay we have seen along with a lot of devices we use uh, capacitors to perform filtering operations okay here the main component used in a ripple filter so in order to avoid ripples also we know that for transformers we use a capacitor filter okay so capacitor filters can be used to perform the removal of ripples okay so that is the question correct answer is a capacitor okay so the ripple filter can also be called as capacitor filter so in order to remove the ripples or ripple waveforms at the output of a transformer we can use capacitor filter okay so that is a ripple filter so the main component is nothing but a capacitor okay next question the maximum forward current of led is about dash is a theory or a yeah theory question the maximum forward current of led is dash a 10 milliampere b 50 milliampere c 5 milliampere d 1.0 ampere that is it is 1 ampere correct answer is 50 milliampere the maximum forward current of led is 50 milliampere will be the maximum forward current correct answer is option b okay next question there is a seventh question which color led has the lowest forward voltage drop again a question connected with led so the the lowest voltage drop is actually for red color okay so the color which is having lowest voltage drop that is which color led has the lowest voltage drop is red color led okay correct answer is a red color led has lowest voltage drop next question next question is for from pcb the time taken for etching pcb is in the range of dash 5 to 10 minutes b 20 to 40 minutes c 1 to 2 hours d more than 2 hour that is in order to etch a pcb etching is a process for on pcb manufacturing how much time is taken for etching of pcb correct answer is option a it is 5 to 10 minutes we take for etching of pcb 5 to not 10 20 okay 5 to 20 minutes correct answer is option a okay 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दीज आर थियरी क्वेश्चन ओनली ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगेन फ्रॉम पीसीबी ओनली द पीसीबी साइड ऑन विच कंपोनेंट आर माउंटेड इज रेफर टू एस डैश ए कॉपर साइड B component side, C solder side, D track side. So if you have seen PCB at least once in your lifetime, you know that on one side of the PCB there will be components connected. On the opposite side there will be uh, copper linings and also there will be uh, spaces for soldering, right? So the portion or the area where the components are connected or the that surface is called the component side. okay so when components are connected this side is called component side correct answer is option b okay next question the 10th question the 10th question is mutual induction is obtained by placing two current carrying coils a side by side close to each other b perpendicular to each other c far away from each other correct answer is when we are placing two current carrying coils side by side to each other only we will get mutual induction not perpendicular or not far away only when the uh, the magnetic fields when they can interact only then the mutual induction effect is produced right so they has to be kept side by side close to each other okay only then you will get a mutual induction effect okay so this is the way of placement and the correct answer is option a is the correct answer okay so these are the 10 questions that we have discussed in this video so i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching